Hello, you're listening to CentralCoastRadio.com. I'm your host, Kyle, and going to be talking about the latest in the Exorcist uh, franchise at the moment. It's a current film that's in theaters for just in time for Halloween. It's uh, The Exorcist Believer. And, uh, well, to, I guess, get, jump right into it, it's it follows... Uh, well, the start of it follows uh, an American photographer named Victor Fielding, played by Leslie Odom Jr., who he's vacationing in Haiti with his heavily pregnant wife, uh, Serene, played by Tracy Graves. Now, as Victor is catching the sights, his wife uh, returns to the hotel to rest. Uh, disaster then strikes as Haiti is uh, hit by a devastating earthquake, which leaves many, including Serene, uh, great, gravely injured. Now, in the aftermath, Victor is faced with the impossible task of choosing between saving Serene's life or the life of their unborn child. Now, 13 years later, back home in Georgia, in USA, uh, Victor resides with his happy and healthy daughter, uh, named Angela, played by Lydia Jewett. Uh, now, he has friendly neighbors in a picturesque suburb, so he's really living the American dream, albeit, albeit maybe without his wife. Uh, Angela wishes to know more about her mother, and, as you know, kids will be kids, so she and classmate Catherine, uh, played by Olivia O'Neill, uh, set off into the woods to perform a harmless seance to talk to the other side. Uh, the two then seemingly disappear without a trace whatsoever. Uh, despite searches, flyers, and news stories, the, the two girls remain missing uh, until they show up three days later, miles from town. Now, with no idea of where the hell they have been, their parents are just happy to have them back, and life goes on as normal until both these girls begin to act peculiar. Uh, it appears that the two of them have been to the other side, and something has come back with them. Now, as his daughter's behavior becomes more and more volatile, uh, Victor is at a loss for a solution, and in desperation he seeks out someone who has seen this exact same horror 50 years ago, uh, a woman by the name of Chris McNeil, who is played by Ellen Bernstein, reprising her role from the original Exorcist film. Now, uh, written by uh, William Peter Blatty, based on his novel, and it was directed by uh, William Friedkin, uh, The Exorcist instantly became a smash hit when it was released in 1973. And in the years since, there have been numerous sequels and innumerable imitators of, of what many considered to be the scariest film ever made. And now with the uh, this, this film, The Exorcist Believer, uh, director David Gordon Green, along with Blumhouse Productions, they're hoping to uh, pull off what they achieved with their Halloween reboot trilogy, uh, which started in 2018. That is, they hope to create a direct sequel which right, wipes the slate clean, uh, of all the other sequels, and thrills audiences once more. Now, to understand the, the success of The Exorcist, you, really, you only have to look at how, at how any film based around uh, demonic possession, uh, which has been made since, um, yeah, like half a century later, and, and filmmakers are, are still inspired by, uh, or they just downright copy uh, Friedkin and, uh, and Blatty's uh, vision. The film, The Exorcist, uh, despite being 50 years old, half a century, <laughs> made half a century ago, uh, it, it's still, it's engaging, shocking, and yeah, just, just downright scary to this very day. Um, now, living up to that legacy is really a Herculean task, and unfortunately, I, I feel it's, it's one that this reboot really struggles in. Um 
personally, I wa- I wasn't as impressed by Halloween um, twenty eighteen, the the reboot Halloween film, as others were. Um, I you know, I was even less impressed by the sequels in that. Uh, reboot trilogy but uh, I did think that at least the Halloween 2018 the reboot that one uh, I at least thought that it it was a perfectly enjoyable slasher flick Uh, the problem here is that uh, the original The Exorcist is a far tougher act to follow than the original Halloween Um, the the subtle creepiness and growing dread which uh was accompanied by subliminal imagery from in the original The Exorcist. It's completely lacking here, uh, and it it's just really replaced with much more standard jump scares and loud noises. Um, and, and I think that's really the best way to describe The Exorcist Believer. Um, I, I thought this right as I was watching it, and it's stuck with me ever since. It is a very standard exorcism movie. Um, uh, Victor's motivation of of being someone who's lost his faith due to personal tragedy, the the children who being possessed and behaving in increasingly vulgar ways, the film's large ensemble cast of characters, none of which are really given much focus beyond uh, Victor and Angela. All of it feels very derivative, uh, when it it could have been much more. Now. It's it's really a pity because at times the Exorcist believer it, it hints at at new ideas or even threatens to subvert our expectations of the exorcism genre. There, there's an early attempt by the filmmakers to not simply recreate the original film's formula, and I did actually find this movie's focus on differing religious views to performing exorcisms highly interesting. Um, there's quite a, a focus on Haitian rituals or African American versions of uh, Christianity modified through uh, syncretism. So, just things that have been picked up from various different degrees, just a, a different ways of uh, performing exorcisms, I think could have been something refreshing for this, uh, for this film. I mean, we've seen the same Catholic Church approach so many times that shaking that up, I think, could have really helped this film's uh, climactic exorcism scenes really stand out. Uh, Sadly, the film really falls into the same tired tropes and cliches that its predecessor created, and which they've just been repeated ever since to the ninth degree. Um, There's really just there's flashing lights, spinning heads, vomiting, and swearing. Uh, but this time it's accompanied by CGI, which really just pales in comparison to practical effects of the uh, the early 70s. Now, uh, the, the highlights of this film, however, are definitely the performances of its its two young actors, uh, the two young Stolitz, uh or the two young uh, ec- um, <laughs> uh, possession victims, uh, I guess. Uh, Jewett and O'Neill are genuinely creepy as as the film's demonically possessed BFFs. And, uh, but the, the film's weak script doesn't really help, as um, O'Neill, in particular, as, as Catherine, is given very little to establish a character before we see a, a shift to pure evil. Um, it, it's, it was actually impressive, then, that um, uh, O'Neill, the actress making her screen debut, like she she still remains kind of a standout as the character of Catherine. Uh, it was even even more so a standout than than Oscar winner uh, Bernstein, who feels completely wasted in reprising her role from the from the first film. So um, yeah, the, the Exorcist Believer it has all the thrills and scares you would expect from a modern horror thriller, and it's definitely enough to keep audiences entertained for its two-hour run. But it was always going to be a, a, a tall order, uh, creating a satisfying direct sequel to The Exorcist, and in this film not setting itself apart from the crowd, it really does fall short of its high potential. So uh, I'm going to give this movie two and a half out of five. You're listening to centralcoastradio.com and we will be back right after this.